My name is Keith Cooper from Northlight Images and uh, this is a BenQ SW271 monitor that I did a reveal of recently and this short video is really just to answer a question I get asked quite often and that's why bother calibrating a monitor? Um, particularly sometimes I'm asked a good quality monitor like this which is probably so good that you don't need to calibrate it anyway. Mm. Therein lies the problem. Probably you don't know. Uh, the whole point about uh, calibration, or I should say profiling calibration, and I've covered this in other videos in more detail, looked at other monitors and in respect to printing things, is that it's about setting your monitor to a known state. That's the calibration aspect of it. The profiling is the bit that tells the computer that you're using, that's connected to the monitor, what the capabilities are of the monitor. So that when your editing software is working, because of the profile what's in it, effectively your editing software knows what display you've got. So that increases the overall accuracy of your photo editing. And if you don't calibrate your monitor, and let's say we just go for a, an ordinary monitor, uh, a cheaper one. Uh, may look fine, but you don't know that. And what happens is that whilst you're editing uh, your images, you're effectively editing them if you're just looking at the screen. This is just a test image I've got on this one here. Uh, you're effectively editing your images to correct what you see on the screen. Now, if the screen is wrong, your editing is, as well as correcting any problems in the image, is correcting for problems with the actual screen itself. So if the screen is too uh, magenta tinged, you will add a bit extra green to make it look right. Uh, that shouldn't be there. That's purely because of an error in the monitor. Now, calibration profiling, uh, it's an i1 display pro. You can use something like that, USB device just plugs in, or even something like a, a Color Checker Studio here, which also lets you build ICC profiles for printers. Now, I've covered that elsewhere in sort of printer reviews and printer articles, but uh, you can actually do your monitors as well uh, with this, and projectors, um, you can do those as well. And Getting your monitor into a known good state is particularly useful if you're sending images off. So if you're sending images off to be printed, then you really want your monitor that you're doing your editing on to be as set up as, as well as possible uh, and to have a colour managed workflow. By workflow, I mean the entire process from taking your picture, getting your pictures into your computer or whatever you want to do with them, editing, processing and sending them off or printing them yourself. It all makes a difference. One other thing that's often forgotten about uh, when you calibrate your monitor is you set the brightness. Now here are um, uh, the variations in this. So this is a sort of slightly cloudy day so I've got cloud coming in and I've got daylight coming in which is variable which means that uh, the brightness of this uh, video varies somewhat. Um, I don't really want that to affect my uh, editing, so I wouldn't edit pictures for print in an environment like this. I want a steadier light. However, in normal lighting, if the monitor is too bright, you tend to edit pictures, make them a bit darker so they look okay. Then when you print them, your prints come out too dark. And in fact, the most common print problem I ever get asked about is my prints are too dark. Uh, what can I do about it? Now, I've done another video that looks at all the different things that can go wrong with prints and what the likely causes are. But the most common one is that the monitor's not set to the right brightness. It's too bright. Um, I don't think I've ever cr come across somebody who had set their monitor to too dim. Um, what I would say, if when you lower the brightness of the monitor, it's too dark in the room that you're working, then the room you're working in is too bright. Turn the lighting down there, uh, dim it. This is about consistency in your image editing. Um, the whole idea of colour management for me is all about consistency and predictability. It's not some spurious notion of perfection or correct results and things like that. That does have 
you know, some aspects of colour management you know, can tinge on that. Certainly in press, um, you know, uh, industrial printing and the like, there are right and wrong ways of going about things. But for general photo editing, my aim for colour management in my workflow, that's right the way from taking the picture through to a print or sending a picture off to a client, because that's important as well for me, is about getting it right first time more often. And that's all it really is. I want to improve the predictability of what I'm doing. I don't want to be surprised. If a print comes out wrong, my attention to colour management, now that means getting a decent monitor, calibrating it, and all the other steps and things I've done, they help me eliminate an awful lot of possible problems that could have caused something to go wrong. It usually comes down to something I've got wrong. Um, I've edited something wrong, I've done something, something somewhere I've done wrong. Modern printers, modern monitors are that good that if you can't make a good quality print, then it's almost certainly your fault. And the bit that most photographers I come across are loath to ever admit is that basically rubbish photography makes for rubbish prints. You need to go back and look at your whole, your photography. Printing, monitors, editing, that's great. But if your photography isn't up to it at the start, then that's always going to cause you problems. So it's about a workflow. It's about colour management helping me get things right first time more often. And yes, you do need it for pro monitors like this. Um, in fact, the whole point of spending the amount of money you get on a high-end monitor like this and then not bothering to calibrate it. Uh, no, you, you've missed the point of it. Please do feel free to ask questions about this. I've got lots of other articles and videos that look into aspects of cover management and the like. Um, it underpins my photography. It gives me confidence in the results. So hope this has been of some use and thank you very much.